Yo, what's up my fellow creatives? Adrian Boysell here. Today, I'm gonna share 10 tips. Yes, 10 tips that you need, 10 strategies you need to elevate your game in graphic design. If you're a graphic designer, I don't care if you're just starting today for your first day, or if you've been doing it for a year, five years, 10 years or longer, this is gonna bring you back to some of those core principles and core foundations that you're going to need to elevate your career and to have the success that you truly want. And you may not be missing many of these or a lot of these, but you may be missing one of these that is the ingredient that you need to take your business to the next level. And that's what I am here to do. I've spent the last 15 years of my career professionally as a graphic designer, but going back even 17 years doing graphic design as a hobby, and I've learned a lot over that period and it's helped me get on stages and helped me really position myself as an authority to where I can now share my experience, my wins and my failures with you here on YouTube. So let's go ahead and jump into the 10 tips that you need to elevate your career as a graphic designer. The first tip, this is an obvious one, but it's creativity. A lot of people actually lack in creativity. They're not getting enough creative inspiration. They're not going and looking at other people's work. They're not spending enough time becoming more and more creative. This is a skill set. It's not just a natural talent that you have, but you can develop and expand your level of creativity. Find artists that think outside of the box, read books, read, listen to music, do all kinds of things that are gonna nurture the creativity that you have inside of you. I see a lot of designers in the industry that are not very creative. They just follow the rules, they go by the book, and they do exactly what school has taught them, and school has kind of kicked out the creativity out of them. And that is something that I don't want you to have because creativity is the one real strategy that you have against AI and all the different things that are happening in our industry, even websites like Fiverr and, and these online e-commerce platforms that are selling graphic design. Your creativity is your flair. It is your unique, unique gift that you can use to set yourself apart from everybody else that's gonna help you give you your unique style. The second thing, and this is probably pretty obvious too, is artistic ability. You might be surprised, but most graphic designers that I've met don't really have an artistic ability. I ask the majority of the ones that I've met and encountered face to face, hey, do you draw? And so many of them do not draw. I am guilty of this myself over the years of doing graphic design for so long. I've gotten further and further away from my artistic ability. And the more I bring myself back to that, the more I add that into my schedule and make time for myself, two things happen. It increases my creativity, I get more ideas, I become more inspired, and I have a creative outlet that lets me nurture that part of myself, and my artistic ability becomes stronger so that when I'm actually doing design, my design work even becomes better. So this is the second thing that you need to be really focused on is increasing and enhancing and doing everything you can, whether it's a course, a mentor, a coach, an art class, to increase your artistic ability. Number three is what I'm doing right now, and that's communication skills. Communication is a two-way street. You need to be able to communicate to your clients and you need to be able to listen. You need to be able to listen to what their needs, their pains, their struggles, their challenges, their roadblocks, and all the things that they have going on in their business. You need to listen to those things carefully, repeat them back to them, make sure that you understand them, you need to document them. All these things are part of communication. You need to be able to communicate that you are the one that can solve their problems at the highest level possible. So communication is an important skill set that I know many people have, but as introverts, which most graphic designers are in my experience, they really struggle to communicate and they don't really say enough. They say the bare minimum just to get to the job and just to basically get to the end of the job so they can go to the next project. Number four is the one that I struggle with the most and the things that I'm constantly working on because that I've hired coaches specifically for this area of my life and I've read books specifically in this area of my life and that's time management skills. You need to have very good time management skills. The amount of work that I'm able to put on my plate today versus 15 years ago is a night and day difference. I was all over the place. I didn't have agendas. I didn't keep track of what I was doing. I didn't use Google Calendar and put everything in my calendar. I didn't have anything scheduled. I just flew by the seat of my pants and tried to do as much as I could every single day. And I worked really hard, but I wasn't working efficiently. And actually having good time management skills is gonna impact your career as a professional and as a creative significantly. I think a lot of creatives struggle with this because we are not naturally bound by time constraints. We want freedom. That's why we do graphic design. We wanna just be able to take the time that we need to be creative and be artistic and express our, our ideas, right? But when we put timelines and deadlines and we actually book things into our calendar, it creates a system that allows you to create more efficiency, allows you to create better work, and allows you to serve your clients and yourself at a much higher level. Number five, yes, number five is your technical skills. If you don't have very strong technical skills, the amount of time that it's gonna take you for to do the work, the amount of quality of the work that you're gonna be able to do is gonna be less. There's just so many disadvantages. You need to become an expert at the softwares that you're using, whether it's your CRM, whether it's your design software like Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, Premiere, whatever software you're using to, to actually service your clients, 
you need to actually become an expert in those technical skills. You need to understand all the different technical skills within graphic design, within web design, within motion design, and then you need to understand the technical skills of running a business finance, operations, fulfillment, marketing, sales. There's a lot of technical skills within each of those. If you wanna become a high level, very successful graphic designer like I am, you have to continue to improve your skills. I'm 15 years in, I still feel like I don't know anything, like I'm just getting started because there's so much to learn. It's an endless amount of information out there, an endless amount of skills that you need to learn. So if you think you've got it all figured out, that's your first mistake. You need to be open-minded, you need to stay a student, and you need to focus on learning as many technical skills as you possibly can, document them, and then implement them. Because once you implement these things, knowing them is one thing, but it's implementing these technical skills that's gonna make the big difference in your business. All right, so we're halfway through. Now I wanna ask you to do me a huge favor. If you've gotten some value out of this video already, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and make sure you hit the bell too so you get notified of our videos because I'm making content like this for free. I'm giving away all my best stuff, sharing all my experience, sharing my failures, sharing my wins, and I need you guys to engage back and show me that this is helpful for you. If you have an idea for a video, drop it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. All right, so let's jump over to number six. Number six is problem solving skills. This is one of my advantages. This is one of my strengths. Time management was one of my weaknesses, but one of my superpowers is my problem solving. I've always gonna been a good problem solver because I look at the end goal of what it is I'm trying to accomplish, and then I reverse engineer what it is that's in my way from getting there. And whether it was taking apart a radio and reverse engineering how that works to figure out how radios worked, or it's doing the same thing for a client saying, hey, you wanna get to this in revenue, this is the, what you need, this is the marketing material, this is the design, this is the website, this is all of those pieces. Being able to problem solve is a really important skill. There's a lot of different problem solving courses and trainings and things that you can do to increase your problem solving skills. But this is where I would encourage you if you're having trouble really diagnosing problems for clients, you're probably lacking in some of your other skills and understanding about your industry. Maybe it's a technical skill, maybe it's a soft skill, maybe your mindset, and there's a lot of different things that you can do, but I wanna encourage you to reach out, comment, engage with me, send me emails, let me know where it is that you're struggling, because problem solving skills are a really important piece of just being a business owner in general, not just being a creative, but the better you can get at solving problems, the more money you can charge. And that's what I've been able to do in my career is I started solving business card design problems, and now I solve massive multi-million dollar problems for companies. So that's a big one for you. Number six, problem solving skills. Number seven, attention to detail. This is something that I also have a strength with is really being a perfectionist when it comes to the type of work that I do. I don't want to make sure I want to make sure that things that I'm doing are not misaligned, colors are right, my uh, layout is right. Like I am a perfectionist when it comes to my design work. I don't like having words that are unkerned, that are current improperly. There's just a lot of different things that you need to pay attention to if you overlook typos and things like that. I struggle with typos. This can cause a lot of issues with your clients. They'll lose faith in you, they'll lose trust, especially if you get some of this stuff printed and it ends up like actual printed materials and it's spelt wrong because you didn't take and pay attention to the details, that's gonna cost you. So make sure that you have somebody to look at your documents for you that you can send your work to to make sure you're not missing anything because it's better to have two sets of eyes than one. Problem solving skills are really, really important. All right, number eight is adaptability. Now this is something that I've been very good at because I grew up and going to 12 different schools as a kid, right? I had to learn how to make friends very quick and adapt to the situations and the environments that I'm in. Right now we're experiencing a time in graphic design where it's changing a lot. We've had things like Fiverr and all these online e-commerce websites that are selling graphic design for cheap and you have websites like Canva eliminating a lot of graphic design jobs and now you have AI. Oh my gosh, well, you either adapt and evolve or you resist and regress. This is the truth. You're either going to adapt and evolve or you're gonna resist and you're gonna regress. So you need to adapt and actually take this information in, take these tools that are being brought to the market and figure out how you can leverage them to your advantage rather than to your disadvantage. Number nine is another one of my superpowers. I started working at a really, really young age with my family doing concrete work and construction. I remember doing hard work and my uncle saying, well, you make more with your mind than you do with your hands. And that was a big moment for me and something I never forgot. And I knew that I always wanted to make money with my mind versus my hands and breaking my back doing concrete work. But I developed that work ethic at a very young age that carried me through my career. And that work ethic, I put so many hours and hours, not just into learning my craft and becoming a great graphic designer, but also serving my clients at the highest level possible and working till one, two, three in the morning and sometimes pulling 24 hour shifts for them. 
None of my competitors were willing to do that. They wanted to work their nine to three or 10 to five or whatever they work five, six hours a day and they just barely squeak by. And maybe that's your issue. Maybe you're not really putting the time in. Maybe your work ethic is really lacking and you need a little bit more discipline in that area of your life. If you need some accountability, that's why we have the Instagraphics Pro Group. I'm gonna be talking a lot about that in our community. It's on Facebook. Just type in Instagraphics Pro Group on Facebook or click the link down in the description. I'd love to see you guys there. All right, you ready for the last one? This is an important one, maybe the most important one. Passion and drive. I'm an extremely passionate and an extremely driven person. You're gonna come up against a lot of challenges, a lot of mistakes, a lot of failures, a lot of bad clients, a lot of things are gonna happen in your career. And your passion and your drive is what's gonna help you push through those things. When times get tough, when you have bad clients, when you drop the ball, when you make a mistake, when your client causes issues, that passion and that drive is what's gonna keep you going, keep learning, keep you growing. So passion and drive is a really big one. These are the 10 things that you need to be focused on as a graphic designer if you wanna have success. I wanna know which one are you gonna be working on out of all of these, what is the most important one that you wanna work on in 2023 and improve for yourself so you can continue to grow your career and have massive success in your creative field? Let me know down in the comments. I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. I'm Adrian Boisel, and as always, keep looking up.